As calls for reform remain deafening in Belarus, UK Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab has added the UK's voice to the growing international condemnation of President Alexander Lukashenko. In a statement, Raab said the UK does not accept the results of the August 9th election, going so far as to call the election fraudulent and calling for an urgent investigation into the vote. Europe's longest serving leader, dubbed Europe's last dictator by the US, is facing the biggest challenge to his rule yet, as protests in the capital of Minsk entered their ninth day. Hundreds of thousands of people have taken to the streets to protest what they, and now the UK government, believe to be rigged results which saw President Alexander Lukashenko swept back into power for the 26th year running. The incumbent has claimed he secured 80% of the vote, but these numbers are considered by many in Belarus and abroad to be questionable to say the least. Lukashenko has been in power since the country's formation in 1994 following the collapse of the Soviet Union. A former collective farm boss, he came to power in what is considered by many to be the last legitimate election. Lukashenko's 26th year in power has seen the largest challenge to his presidency in decades. The coronavirus pandemic and Belarus's response to it seemingly the final straw for many of the country's citizens. Now, the president faces some of the largest protests ever seen in the country, as well as strikes in state-run factories and even TV stations, as reports of shocking violence against protesters galvanized many of Belarus's citizens to take to the streets in solidarity. Leading the calls for reform is Svetlana Tekhanovskaya, who claims to have won the election after challenging Lukashenko in place of her husband, a popular blogger who was jailed and banned from running for office. She claims to have secured 60 to 70 percent of the vote in places where ballots were counted fairly. Speaking from Lithuania, where Svetlana fled soon after the election results were announced, the 37-year-old stay-at-home mum said she's prepared to lead the country and called on security forces to switch sides. If you decide not to carry out your illegal orders and switch to the side of the people, they will forgive you, support you and won't blame you in the future. The plea to police follows widespread reports of the use of violence to break up protests. Police fired rubber bullets, stun grenades and tear gas in attempts to break up the crowds. And on the night of the election, more than 3,000 people were arrested, with that number now growing to more than 6,000. Tanya Lokshina is the Associate Director for Human Rights Watch's Europe and East Asia Division. She was in Minsk for three days at the height of the unrest. Over the time period of three days, Thousands of Belarusian citizens were arbitrarily detained by police and beaten viciously. And that realization shook up the public to the extent that many people who did not participate in protests in the past, who were not so much into politics for that matter, felt they simply had to come out and speak out about that horrific, inexcusable violence. I think it was a game changer for Belarus, really. The authorities entrapped themselves. But despite the pressure inside and outside Belarus, Lukashenko has remained as defiant as ever. Today, telling State TV that there will be no new election until you kill me.